What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the week's hottest topics, you guys. The week is really going by fast, very fast. This is the week of July. What is this week? I know we're ending the week with the 9th. July the... Hell, July the 4th. Come on, Abby. It was, it's the week of July 4th. It was the week of July 4th through July 9th. How did I forget that? Um, so yeah, you guys, these are going to be the hot topics for this week. So if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then what are we doing? Like, why are we continuously going on a date week after week after week? And I'm every week I'm put with the bill. Um, so yeah, if you guys do me a big favor, subscribe to the channel, notifications on, like the video, all that good jazz, um, and share the video. Now, with that being said, let's talk about what's hot and what's trending this week, you guys. All right, you guys, so um, the first thing and a bit of sad news, let's talk about the fact that um, actress Suzanne Douglas, she passed away this week. Now, I didn't see it till I saw it on Ashley's um, timeline. She posted that Suzanne had passed away. And if you guys are not familiar with Suzanne, now for me, she's mo I most know Suzanne for her work on the WB show back in the 90s, early to late 90s, early 2000s. It was The Parenthood. And on The Parenthood, she starred alongside Reagan Gomez Preston, um, Robert Townsend, she also who played on there was phase on love he played a character named wendell um the list i mean there was a guy i can't i can't even think of the actor who played tk but there was a guy who played a character tk so yeah it was um like i said the show was called the parenthood so she passed away this week and i think it was either tuesday or actually i think they said when did they say she passed i i saw it but i didn't really take a look when she passed away but she passed away nonetheless. She was 64 years old. Um, I did not look to see if she had any kids, grandkids, or anything like that. But we're definitely going to extend a rest in peace to her, you know, her loved ones who are left to mourn her, um, her, her loss. 64. Very young. Very young. Um, like I said, um, at this point, no cause of death has been announced so like i said we're just gonna lift her and her family up in prayer and with that being said we are going um actually let's not, i mean i don't know now the story actually the other story out there in haiti i don't know much about that one was it um actually i'm not gonna talk about it because i don't know anything about it so i'm not gonna talk about it but let's move on you guys All right, you guys, so let's talk about something in white people's news. So, you guys know I tell you all the time that I watch The View, right? I I actually just recently got back into watching The View. It was actually with this pandemic that I started back watching The View with me work, with working from home. You know, the last job that I had, I went to work when we started, when we transitioned from home, from office to home, I worked from 10 to 6.30 at night, which I hated that shift immensely i hated that shit that was the worst shift you could give me and mind you they kind of told us when we got there we would work 8 to 4 30 but then they made us do a shift bid i never want another job where i do a shift bid ever again in life i hate shift bids because they can change quarterly or whenever they feel like it never again but suffice it to say when i got home when we were working from home like i said 10 o'clock i would log in at 10 o'clock, the view comes on in my local area. So I would be at the you know at my table at my desk doing my work and I would have the view on the television. So that's really how I got into the view back into the view because before that I would look at clips of the view online and you would see, you know, how the whole you know, you would see them get into their little arguments that they have, which they've been doing that for years on the view. So it's not like it's something new and unheard of that's happened with this you know with these new group of ladies that are on the view so if you guys don't know who is currently on the view you have um the co-host consists of sunny hostin 
who is um, a, a legal analyst, Sonny Hostin. You have Whoopi Goldberg as the moderator. You have Joy Behar. And Joy moderates on Fridays when Whoopi is off. You have um, um, Sarah Haynes, who was on Sarah, Straight Hand Sarah and Kiki. But that got canceled, so Sarah came back over to The View. Then you have Anna Navarro, who comes in on Fridays. And, you know, she's a co-host with the ladies on Fridays when Whoopi is off. And then you have your likes of Megan McCain, right? I've, when it comes to Megan McCain, she's annoying as hell. Like, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. When it comes down to Megan McCain, she's so fucking annoying. Like, it's all with Megan McCain is always, you know, she doesn't try to empathize with people. She all it's like she always tries to one up people or my father this, my father that, da 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 da. Anytime you talk about something, it's um it's like she tries to one up you, right? And it's so fucking annoying, right? It's it's really annoying to no avail to listen to her. So Megan announced last week that, you know, that once the show goes on, you know, once they go on their summer break she will that will be her this will be her last season so she's been on the show for four seasons at this point and the thing with megan is it's one thing to have your different points of view that's fine but megan is rude as hell like megan is rude the way she talks to joy sometimes the way she talks to Whoopi. like i just find her to be the most disrespectful she's so freaking disrespectful like I can't put it any other way. She's disrespectful. And I always found it interesting when it comes to Meghan McCain. Meghan McCain, anytime something big politically happens, anytime something big happens in in their in her political party, she's not there. Like after the insurrection on January 6th, Meghan wasn't there. It's been some other things that have happened with you know who's administration where Meghan was not there to give her two cents. But anything democratic, Megan is is highly critical, highly analytical. But when it came to stuff like that, she's not there. Because actually, it was so funny when the insurrection happened. I was like, oh, I'm I'm like I gotta tune into the view tomorrow to see what Megan McCain has to say. So you know, and I'm like I'm like you know what? It's Megan. So Megan more than likely is not going to be on the view tomorrow because I don't think she wants to speak towards that. And lo and behold, Megan was not on the view the next day. It was Anna that stepped in, you know, for um, Megan. So, like I said, Megan's leaving the view. Now, people, and Carlos King's all, he always tweets about this. You know, people talk about Megan. She is a draw to the show, which I get it. I give it. I'll give him that. She is definitely a draw to the show. When you think about the view these last couple of years and who's the most talked about person, unfortunately, it's her. Ooh, my bad, y'all. So now they have to think about who to replace Meghan McCain with, right? Obviously, you want to replace her with someone that is, you know, um, a Republican, right? But then when you think about it, who can you replace her with? Who is the question? Then comes up, who can you replace her with? I've saw so many names that come have people have said. I'm like, oh God, no. Those people would be terrible because these people but i mean megan is a little alt right i mean her husband we, i mean she doesn't she never mentions her husband very rarely but i guess when it comes I, so i'm gonna throw out some of the names that people have said and i just well one name that i saw i'm like i would never watch this show and the ladies i don't think the ladies would click would click with her because i believe she would be so this she would be so what is what is the word I want to use? She would just have so much issues with all the ladies. Like I said, it's one thing to have your point of view, and we can disagree. We can agree to disagree or whatever. But the name that people have thrown out is CEO. Y'all know who that is. I'm not gonna say her name on this channel, but see her name. Her, her initials are C and O, and she's a black woman, and she's a you know who supporter, which I don't have an issue with that. But I don't think that CEO would be a good. I just don't think she would be a good fit. And then I just thought about somebody else. I'm like, she would be even worse. Tommy, La- Tammy Laren, Tommy, whatever the fuck that dumb girl's name is. Tommy Laren, she would be even worse. So I don't know. Now, I have been thinking maybe they can make Anna full-time, right? But even with Anna, 
I know Anna is a Republican, but Anna's views differs from what Megan's views differ. You know, they they differ slightly. I mean, they differ. You know, you could you could also you could kind of look at um at Anna as like you know she's kind of in the middle of the you know she's in the middle because she can I mean she DeSantis she doesn't care for she cannot stand DeSantis she can't stand DeSantis she can't stand a lot of those Republicans so it would be interesting I mean I would love to see Anna as a I really do want to see Anna full time but I think to keep it keep things kind of how they are you would have to find someone that is similar to a Meghan McCain I mean, you don't want anybody that's as disrespectful as she is, but you want someone that kind of shares her political ideologies, so to speak, I would think. But let me know what you guys think about it. I'm happy as hell that Megan is leaving to keep it real with you. But who do you guys think should replace Megan McCain on The View? Leave your comments in the comment section below and let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about the Olympics. There's a lot going on with the Olympics, and the Olympics is actually getting ready to come up, right? So we all know one thing that's going on with the Olympics, right? And that thing is the fact that, you know, the the athletes, they can't wear any kind of Black Lives Matter apparel, which I don't understand that. But, I mean, if they want to say, and, they, and I saw on the news today where they said that that's not something that they just started that they've been like that where you can't wear anything that has a I guess a political statement or anything like that but Black Lives Matter is technically not political but okay so we already know that they're doing that right so on top of that they've also come out and said that the black athletes I, I think more specifically the swim athletes they can't wear um you know a head you know a head wrap a head that protects their hair and I'm just confused like what the does that have to do with anything I don't that one I don't understand if it's something that's protective of a person's hair what's the issue like what is that gonna do what is that gonna harm what is that gonna hurt like that's where I'm stuck at like I don't understand that when I saw that it was confusing to me because I'm like I just don't understand what the significance of that is you know what i'm saying i just don't understand the significance now if anybody knows that you know anybody knows that feel free to let me know in the comment section below and we can definitely discuss it so then also the biggest thing that's happened this week is with shakari richardson we all know that shakari qualified to go to tokyo right well unfortunately you know actually at the beginning of the week you know, people were like, well, she still can go. She just has a 30 day suspension. So she might not be so she might still be able to participate. And so the reason that Shakiri has a 30 day suspension is because of when she, you know, when she took her drug test and everything, she tested positive for, you know, um, marijuana, which I'm like, OK, that's not a bad thing. But the thing is, you know, they um, they're not supposed to have that in their systems. And Shakiri knew that. And she said she knew that because she did an interview with the Today Show, right? And she said she knew it. But the thing is, Shakari has gone through so much. I mean, she found out that her mother, her biological mother, passed away. So the girl is just going through a lot. So I'm not going to fault her. I'm not going to fault her at all. Now, I will say the people that's on her team, you know, on her side. I'm just like, did any, no one can, I mean, no one talked to her about this and I know Nike is still on her side so at this point like I said you know it was supposed to be a 30 day suspension but at this point Shikari is not going to be you know able to participate in the you know the Tokyo Olympics this year which is sad and I know people are trying you know people are talking about boycotting I do get why people are saying boycott I do understand that but at the same token there are other black athletes that are um, participating in the Olympics this year so I'm not going to say let's boycott, you know, just for one person. I mean, I think we need to support our other athletes that are, the, that are competing as well. And like I said, you know, I'm upset. I'm, I, I'm, I'm upset and I'm a little saddened that Shakira is not going to be participating because I really want to see, you know, her, you know, I, I really want to see her, you know, do the damn thing. 
But you know, Shakiri, like I said, she knew she knew the rules. She didn't follow the rules, and when you don't follow the rules, there are consequences and there are repercussions for not following the rules. Um. So yeah, a little bummed, but you know, she'll be able to come back in four years, and you know, she'll be able to do the damn thing. So yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm I am bummed, no doubt, bummed, but. Let's just support, like I said, let's support the other athletes that are competing in the Summer Olympics. Speaking of the Olympics, when do the Olympics start? Does does it start this month or is it August? I, I need to look at that. I definitely need to look at that. Um, But yeah, you guys, that's pretty much it for the, you know that segment. Let me know what you guys think about, um, you know, Sherry not competing in the Olympics. Are you guys going to boycott the Olympics or are you guys going to still watch the Olympics? Let me know which now I will say I know that it I know that it is a rule for her, you know, about the weed. But the thing is with the weed, weed, if anything, it does. To you, it makes you lethargic. It doesn't make you. I mean, when Shakira ran, she smoked those girls. So it did not enhance her. It did not do anything to her. She literally still beat the shit. She still beat those girls in that race. Like that's where I'm. That's what I'm stuck on. <clears throat> I get it. They don't want weed. I get that. I'm not gonna sit here and beat a dead horse with a stick. But like I just said, it's the, the thing is, she did not. I mean, like I said, weed slows you down. She did not get slowed down. She ran faster. So it's just interesting. It's very interesting. <clears throat> like I did see this one report <laughs> where this this um young lady named Allison something. She tested positive for steroids. <clears throat> I think she's disqualified as well, but she tested positive for steroids. And this girl said that you know maybe she when she ate a pork maybe when she ate a pork sandwich or something that the steroids were there. I'm like really to have a huge trace for them to be able to trace the steroids in your body. You've been on them steroids for a minute. You've been on them steroids for a hot minute. But yeah, you guys, please um get them in the comment section and let me know what you guys think about that situation and we will definitely discuss it further. But let's move on. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Wendy Williams and Tabitha Brown, right? So Wendy Williams, she was on her show, right? And she was discussing Tabitha Brown. So Tabitha is um, retiring her husband, right? So her husband has worked in the... Um, he's been a policeman for so many years now. So at this point, Tabitha said that, you know, since she's got her, you know, um, she's on the shy. She is... Uh, she's on a shy. She has her seasoning saw. She has so much going on for her right now. So... Tabitha has decided to retire her husband, right? So that way he can go on and pursue things that he wants to do. I know she says he's a coach. He does so many other things. It's time for him to pursue what he wants to pursue. Now, he took the job in the police force, on the police force, to be able to take care of Tabitha, right? Take, take care of his family. Take care of his family. And they made a deal with that. So that was their arrangement. I'm pretty sure the arrangement was, you know, oh, my bad, y'all. I didn't mean to burp you face. I'm pretty sure the arrangement was something similar to like, you know, hey, if, you know, you know, I want to be an actor or model or singer or whatever I want to be, you know that that's my end goal, right? So let me pursue that goal, right? But in the meantime, why don't you go get a job, work that job and take, you know, support me and the family and I'll still do what I can do. I'll still, you know, maintain home. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do my part as well, right? So that's probably what the arrangement was. And now that Tabitha has gotten herself in a great space in her life, she's, she's, you know, she's thriving in her career. And she's like, you know what? It's time for you, you know, it's time for you to do what you want to do. And, you know, let me bear, you know, take care of, take care of home and take care of the family as well, you know. 
So you retire. And the thing is, even with him retiring, I'm pretty positive the man is going to get a pension. He's going to get a pension and so much other stuff from retiring from the police force. So, and on top of that, I know it's got to be a, I know it's got to be got to be hard for Tabitha when her husband leaves the house every day in that uniform. She doesn't know if her husband's going to come back home every day. So now with him retiring, it's like, you know, that's a piece of that's a, 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 a stress reliever for her, knowing that her man is not putting his life on the line every single day. And she doesn't have to wake up when he, you know, she doesn't wake, have to wake up and be like, oh, my God, my husband is going to you know, go to go to a job that I don't know what's going to happen to him today. Today could be the day that someone goes crazy, you know, goes goes crazy and just, you know, shoots him and kills him. So I know that that has to be a good thing for her to not feel that stress, that burden, that worry. I know that has to be a good thing for her. Right. So, like I said, Wendy got on her show. Right. And Wendy was talking about what, you know, to have to return her husband. And I get Wendy's point of view where she's coming from, but people's situations are completely different. Wendy's situation is completely different from what Tabitha's situation is. Tabitha and her husband, they came up in the trenches together. Like, and, I, and I'm not saying that Wendy and, and Kevin did. The, the, the big difference between Wendy and Kevin and Tabitha and her husband is Kevin worked for you. Kevin, one Kevin worked for you. That was the biggest thing. Like me personally, I don't think I could work with somebody that I'm in a relationship with. I just don't understand how people do that. How do you work with? All right, you guys. So the camera just turned off by itself. So like I was saying, I don't. Me personally, I don't understand. I, I couldn't work with someone that I'm in. I'm married to, or just in a relationship with. Like we work together and we go home together. The lines at that point would be blurred for me. I'm like, damn, can you go somewhere? Like, I, I'm, I've looked at you for eight hours at work. Now I got to look at you for the rest of the night. I, I couldn't do it. It just wouldn't be for me. And like I said, Tab, he's retiring. So, yes, you could proceed. You could say that, oh, now Tabitha is going to be taking care of her husband. But not necessarily, like I just said a few minutes ago. He more than he's he's gonna get a retirement, he's gonna get a pension. So he's gonna have money coming in. So it's not like he's just sitting I mean, technically he will be at home, but it's not like he's just gonna be sitting on his ass all day. Like Tabitha said, he has other things that he does. He has his he's coaching. I, I forgot what, what some of the other stuff was that she said, so that's why I won't say. But he has other things that he's doing. So it's not like he's going to be financially dependent on Tabitha. It's just not like that. And I think for me, when it came to Wendy, like I said, I kind of got what Wendy was saying. But at the same time, I, Wendy was projecting as well. Wendy was definitely projecting her issues with Kevin onto Tabitha. And I didn't agree. I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree with that part. She was projecting because just because what happened with you and Kevin doesn't mean that's what's going to happen with, you know, um, Tabitha and her man. It doesn't mean that. So, yeah, I just think Wendy was projecting. But like I said, and, you know, Tabitha, when I tell you Tabitha read her and it was the most, it was the most classy. I mean, it was the classiest read that I've ever heard. She was talking about the fact that Wendy was hurt, obviously. So Wendy is definitely hurt. I mean, who wouldn't be hurt about what Kevin did to Wendy? Who would not be hurt by that? He got with Sharina. She knew about Sharina. He had the baby with Sharina. He bought Sharina that damn car. Like, he did everything. Like, he did Wendy. He literally did Wendy dirty. And much like what Tabitha was saying, I do hope that Wendy does find someone that makes her happy. Like, I really do hope Wendy finds someone that the right person for her. Because obviously, Kevin wasn't it. And maybe there isn't. Maybe Wendy is, you know, maybe she might be happy being by herself and it, it just being her and Lil' Kev. Who knows? But I do agree with, you know, I do. I, I can see both sides of the coin. I think for me, I think I can see both. Like, I'm not, I don't think I know I can. I can see both sides of the coin. 
I get where Wendy was trying to come from. I think Wendy was trying to come from a place of, oh, girl, I've been in that situation before. You don't want to do that. I, I feel like that's what she was coming from. But the message was not conveyed in the best way, I would say. And like I said, Tabitha came back and read her in the most classiest way she could. Um, but yeah, like I said, I can see both sides of it. I think if Wendy had a voice her opinion, I think if Wendy had a voice it differently, maybe it wouldn't have been as, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. Let me know what you guys think. But like I said, for, but like I said, the situations are definitely different. And I know people are saying, you know, what you see on social media, you know, you see one thing on social media, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. That is 1000% true. But as I just stated a minute ago, when it comes to this man, he is retiring from the police force. So he is going to get, he's going to get his benefit. He's going to get, he's going to, he's still going to have benefits and stuff. So it's not like he's going to be a bump on the log, a leech or anything like that. So it's not like Tabitha is going to be taking care of him 100%. The man is still going to have something, some kind of form of income coming in. But let me know what you guys thought about that. And we're going to definitely move on you guys. All right, you guys. So I went through edit, you know, recorded hot topics, started to edit the thing, realized I didn't close the video out for you guys. So that is going to be all that I have this week for hot topics. Um, so yeah, let's discuss everything that I've talked about in this video. So with that being said, you know, we guys, we do this every single week. We do this the same time, same place, same channel. Well, I'll try to do it at the same time. Um, but yeah, that's it, you guys. Be safe out there. You guys have a great weekend. You guys know, um, yeah, have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys later on for Ready to Love. And I'll see you guys for Love at the Lockup. And that'll be it. So stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourself. And remember, wash your hands. Please wear your, wear your mask or not. Whichever one you guys decide to do, be safe in doing whatever you guys do. Socially distance. Um, and that's it, you guys. So until next week, you guys, bye.